Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and on this episode, we're talking about somebody or people stealing your song, right? Uh, look, a lot of people have these claims, okay? I'm going to break this down in three categories on today's show, all right? But before we do that, I highly suggest that you watch Copyright Explained to get a refresher. I know it's two minutes and 30 seconds. I know you heard it over and over, but when we go into today's episode, it would be nice if you had a refresher. So if you want to donate to the channel, you can do so right over here. If you still feel that you're so highly inclined on copyright that you can skip Copyright Explained, skip it down below, but let's jump into Copyright Explained. Copyright, the sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions. The exclusive right of an author to print, publish, and then their own literary works for their own benefit. Now, of course, there are two main rights of copy that the music industry operates and revolves around, and that's the masters and the publishing. And the masters is referred to as the sound recording copyright. Sound recordings as in records, masters, phonogram, or the audio recording file, i.e. the WAV, MP3, AIFF, of the composition and or song. Now, you can collect your master recording royalties or the proceeds due from the sale and streaming of the master recording via your distributor like TuneCore DistroKid, and if you have a major label deal, then it's them, all right? Now, you can also collect the performance royalties via the master sound recording via Sound Exchange and PPL over in the UK. Sound Exchange is based here in America. And if you are outside of America, any other organization that collects these sound recording performance royalties are referred to as neighboring rights. Now, publishing is referred to as a performing arts copyright here in America. Okay, performing arts as in the composition, sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. You can collect the performance royalties for the composition via BMI, CSAC, ASCAP here in America and PRS over in the UK. And other countries have their own performing rights organization as well to collect those royalties for you. All right. Now, you can collect the mechanical royalties due from the composition via Harry Fox, Music Reports and the Mechanical Licensing Collective here in America. You can also collect your mechanical royalties over in the UK from MCPS. So now. Lyric Fine right here. You can get your lyric display royalties from Lyric Fine and Music Match, but that's that. Let's go through the six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17, and that's the right to reproduce. The right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records, physical or digital format. The right to prepare derivative works. The right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work. The right to distribute, the right to distribute copies or phono records of the copyrighted work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease or lending. And then we have the right to public performance, the right to perform the copyrighted work publicly, the right to public display, the right to display the copyrighted work publicly and the right to digital performance. And that's the right to digital audio transmission performance. All right, everybody. So we're back out of copyright explain. Now, we got to preface this thing. Uh, today's show will be broken down into three categories. It's going to be broken down by the person who has ideas that aren't fixed in a tangible form. All right. It's going to be broken down by people who have ideas that are fixed, but they're not published works. Neither are they registered with the Copyright Office. And then the other side is people who do have published works, right? They're fixed in tangible form. They're published works and they are registered. We're going to break it down by these three types of people. Now, if you've had songs stolen from you or ideas lifted from yours, I'm going to break down how an idea is lifted, how concepts are lifted, how lyrics and melodies are lifted, right? Are pulled from your stuff. And what category do they fall into when it comes to theft? And how can what can you do to combat it? Uh, and then what can you do about it? Okay, so it's going to be a lot in today's show. It's a little bit lengthy. I think my shows are averaging out around 30 minutes, but I don't want to babble on about this thing. You got enough for the preface. Let's jump into the computer and I'll see you on the other side. All right, everybody. So we're in the computer again, yet again, uh, and we got to address United States Code Title 17, Section 102. I think I might have addressed Section 102 on this channel before. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. But 
in order for us to break down today's show, we got to put this on the table so that you understand. And then we can move forward from there. All right. So United States Code Title 17, Section 102, subject matter of copyright in general. Copyright protection subsists in accordance with this title in original works of authorship fixed. We're going to get into fixed. Fixed is a very important word, and I will have the definition for you in about two or three slides. Okay. In any tangible medium, that means CD, MP3, Wave, AIFF, you know what I mean, of expression. Let's read that again. Copyright protection subsists in accordance with this title in original works of authorship fixed in any tangible medium of expression now known or later developed. All right. From which they can be perceived, reproduced or otherwise communicated either directly or with the aid of a machine or device. Works of authorship include the following categories. One. Literary works, that's your lyric sheet. That's like a Word document with the lyrics typed out. Two, musical works, including and accompanying words. That's your manuscript paper, your sheet music with the words written underneath it, like a hymnal or something like that, all right? Or like the stuff you see in the music shops where children learn how to play instruments and they got the sheet music and the words and all that stuff to go with it. Anyway, dramatic works. Including and uh, including any accompanying music, pantomimes and choreographic works, pictorial graphic and sculptural works, motion pictures and other audiovisual works, sound recordings and architectural works. All right. B. In no case does copyright protection for an original work of authorship extend to any idea. Wait a minute. Let me back this up. This is important. I hate that thing at the bottom of the screen. This is important right here. Okay. Let's go through this again. In no case does copyright protection for an original work of authorship extend to any idea, procedure, process, system, method of operation, concept, principle, or discovery, regardless of the form in which it is described, explained, illustrated, or embodied in such work. Now, to sum this up, your ideas, your concepts, they cannot be registered with the copyright office it will not get protection the idea the concept the method of op operation must be expressed in a tangible medium right in order for it to be available or in order for it to be to pass as copyrightable or registered to be registered uh, uh, under the copyright office in the laws of the united states OK, or what's left of it anyway. So let us go to the next slide. Now, what is not protected by copyright? I just said copyright. And this is from copyright circular number one. Copyright does not protect ideas, procedures, methods, systems, processes, concepts, principles or discoveries. Works that are not fixed in a tangible form, such as a choreographic work that has not been noted or recorded or an improvisational speech that has not been written down. Mm, okay. Now, titles, names, short phrases, and slogans, familiar symbols or designs, mere variations of typo, oh, excuse me, typographic ornamentation, lettering, or coloring, mere listings of ingredients or contents. Now, what really, what re will really, uh, um, matter to musicians here will be the idea of the song right the the concept of the song the method in which you play the song the process on how to play the song but mainly it's the concept and the idea for mu musicians okay um like i said the, the, it, they can't protect anything that's not fixed in a tangible form how would you be able to get here Works that are not fixed in a tangible form, such as a choreographic work that has not been notated or recorded. Now, for dancers, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to touch on this in a minute later in the video. I don't know what a notated dance is or recorded or an improvisational speech, like a live performance of something that was never recorded or written or whatever. It, they can't copyright that. It has to be put into a form, okay, where it can be tangible. 
All right. Titles, names, short phrases and slogans. See, these things right here are trademarks, but they can't be copywritten. So you got to use the right registration. And then, of course, symbols and designs. You know what I mean? Like your logo and all of that. Um, that has to be on the trademark side. So now let's keep going. Now, under copyright circular 33, and mind you, these circulars are all in uh, Title 17. It's just a summary, and I just use these circulars because it helps me without having to dig through all 500 pages of, the, of Title 17. So anyway, copyright law expressly excludes copyright protection for any idea, procedure, process, system. All right? Let's go back. Copyright law expressly excludes copyright protection for any idea procedure process system method of operation concept principle or discovery regardless of the form in which it is described explained illustrated or embodied the office may however register a literary graphic or artistic description explanation or illustration of an idea procedure process system or method of operation provided that the work contains a sufficient amount of original authorship OK, that's where it will defer. So if the concept is, you know, uh, uh, like it's like a, a song and you're talking and it has a, you know, we were all going to the beach and we were chilling. Well, there could be tons of songs about going to the beach and chilling, especially in people in California writing songs like that. Right. So you're going you're going to the beach and you're chilling. That's the concept of the song. But you must now give a sufficient amount of original authorship for it to be passable for registration with the copyright office. You get what I'm saying? However, copyright protection will extend only to the original expression in that work and not to the underlying idea, methods, or systems described or explained. Now, most of you all who are watching this video might stop at this moment and understand what just happened in your case. But for those of you all who are still on the defense about what might have happened to your song and how it got stolen, let us go into the show. Now, we got to address fix and then we're going to jump on category one of, of the people who got their stuff taken from them and, and what we're going to do about it. OK, what does fix mean? United States Code Title 17, Section 101. That's the definition section. All right. A work is fixed in a tangible medium of expression when it is when its embodiment in a copy or phono record by or under the authority of the author. That's the writer. OK. Is sufficiently permanent. OK. Or stable to permit it to be perceived. That's for someone to listen to reproduce. That means repress MP3s or distributed or whatever or otherwise communicated, you know, through Spotify and all of that or you can send it through text messages and email for a period of more than transitory duration, meaning that it can leave its original form and go to several other forms. At least that's how I perceive that. A work consisting of sounds, images, or both that are being transmitted is fixed. Let's read that again. A work consisting of sounds, images, or both that are being transmitted is fixed. For purposes of this title, if a fixation of the work is being made simultaneously with its transmission. Let's go. How in the world did the song get taken from you? So let's figure this thing out. Now, here is what the operatives are looking at when they come around you trying to get the song from you. This is ideas that are not yet fixed. So most of you all are getting songs taken from you because the idea like, oh, they, they took my song like that's, you know, that's that's kind of how I sung it. But then that's what I said. But it, it went like that. And, you know, it had kind of had the rhythm. You know what I mean? But you can't give me an exact way. You know, well, I said apples are green. Right. But they said apples are green and red. And but, you know, they were around me. So I figured, you know, they stole the song from me. It doesn't work like that. If you said apples are green and they said apples are green and red, it's not the same thing. And that's a fact. You can't even copy. You can't copyright a fact. All right. And a lot of you look for any nitpicking thing to say somebody stole something from me. OK. Now, the operatives, they're betting that. 
All right. A, you don't know how to register for copyright protection or even know what it is. B, you will be too overwhelmed or C, you won't have the cash to fight the battle. All right. So this guy over here is betting all of that. Now, before we jump into the next slide, I want to say here that, you know, anybody can come to where you are or listen to your music and get what is called inspiration. They're inspired by it. They want to make something like it. As long as you can change it enough and give enough original creative expression to the inspiration that was pulled from somebody, then it is yours and you are free to go. Okay? But if someone comes and they take your lyrics, they take the melody on how you sung it, then we got to go into things a little bit further. So, But most of you all are claiming that your songs got stolen from you when it wasn't even in fixed form yet. So... Ideas not fixed yet. What happened? Did you have a studio session with other creatives who could get out get out ideas in a timely fashion? All right. Did you have a writing session camp set up by your publisher? Were you chilling on the block freestyling with the homies? Did you have a bunch of randoms around when you, when you were recording? Were there industry execs around? You know what I mean? What happened and how did the song get stolen from you? All right. Now I got more I got more options coming. Don't don't trip. This this is not the only. This is just for your ideas that are not fixed in fixed form. Right? Because you might say something dope in the studio and you might not use it. But you'll remember that you said it. Or how about this? You'll be in the studio and you'll record a dope idea, but then you'll record over it. Now, in all actuality, it's still on the hard drive unless you have destructive record on in your recording application. But it's still in the drive. Problem is, to, to get you to find a take that was recorded over months or years ago where somebody pulled the idea that you don't have reference of anymore, you can't really combat that. Okay? So someone could be in a session and get inspired by a, by a line you said or a line you freestyled in the studio or on the, on the porch or on the block or whatever it is, and then they can take that line and they can use it in their song, and legally it's fine. Okay? So I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but you get where I'm going. So now, how to prevent this from happening? One, don't have a studio session with lots of people in the session you don't know. Two, keep a recorder on you at all times and on when in a writing session camp set up by your publisher. Now, what I mean by it's not like your iPhone recorder you can possibly have a handheld recorder, but it has to have enough memory time. Now they got these like little spy recorders. You can like, you know, like wires when people wear wires and they do these raids and stuff. But you can have a wire on you if you want, you know, a little recorder that just sticks in your pocket and it runs. It might run for 12 hours at a time and it will keep track of everything you're saying. Right now you, you know, you can talk to it. This is hour one. This is hour two. You can stop it and start it every hour if you want to, or you can just speak into it and check your time. Put a put an alarm on your on your phone to let you know every hour on the hour you need to tell the the microphone, hey, this is this is one hour. This is two hours. This is three hours. All right. Something where the recording file won't be huge. It's just like a cheap recorder, and it can record for hours and hours on end. That's what I mean by keeping a recorder on you. And be mindful of low-level label execs or just industry people frequenting your sessions. All right? If they're not for you, if they're not part of your crew, they shouldn't be in there. You shouldn't have a bunch of people in your creative space while you're creating anyway. Okay? Anybody could be an op. I'm just saying. Now, next scenario. So, ideas are fixed, not registered, and are unpublished. The operatives plan, they're betting that, A, you won't have the cash to fight the battle, just like last time, okay? You won't even notice, B, or C, you won't even care, okay? So that's what they're betting when you have it fixed. Let's say you got it recorded in a session. Maybe it's on MP3, but it's not registered as uh, with the copyright office, and it is not published. So what happened? Well... Sending your demo versions around for recognition, meaning you want people to listen to your demos and, you know, say, yay, we'll, re we'll record this or no, you know, get out of here, whatever. Go to the next option. Are you making TikTok and IG videos with on-the-spot freestyling? 
All right. This is like maybe you're rapping and singing. All right. And then do you have session files of unpublished works, meaning that it's recorded, but it's not publicly published to the public, meaning that it's not for sale. OK. Are you making TikTok videos and IG videos with on the spot freestyling? That's that's a huge question. Now, your videos will be will be protected, you know, via TikTok and IG. But at the same time, it's what's in the videos. The video as the expression of what you're saying in an audio visual format is copywritten, right? But if you feel like, oh, this video may possibly be going viral or I'm getting a lot of love on this, you, what you want to do is type out whatever it is you said or take the audio, rip the audio from the video and, re and just copyright the sound recording. Rip the audio from the video and copyright the sound recording and then get a manuscript of um, or transcript of the words you said, type it out, and then copyright that as well. If it starts to go viral, keep keep a you want to keep your content in order. And you might say, well, case this is a lot of money. Well, not not exactly. Not like it started to creep up on the cash, but then they kind of worked some things out in 2021 and 2020 under the cover of darkness when everybody was like, you know, locked down. They started to I was watching. I was watching the laws that were coming in and out and they they moved some things that made some things easier for us as, you know, uh, creatives and, and musicians and whatnot. So let's keep going. So what, what, what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to grab a copyright attorney because you have enough evidence to fight it. You just have a, you have to compile your evidence and register your works. You may not get statutory damages because this person more than likely publicly published the work. That's how you found out about it in the first place. So, and, 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 and this is what I mean by that. Statutory damages, I explained it on other videos on this channel. Uh, uh, mainly, I think it's how to own your masters and how to own your publishing. I, I explain statutory damages there, but uh, you may not get those damages simply because you didn't have it registered before the infringement took place. But what you need to do is you got to have that thing registered with the copyright office anyway to enter a litigation into federal court. All right, your state federal court level. You'll you'll start there. And then that's where you'll go from there. Now, of course, we do have new things like the Case Act that just passed. Was it this year or last year? I think it was this year. That was another thing that just passed. The Case Act had finally, the Case Act finally passed in the United States this year. So that's a small claims copyright court. Anything less than thirty thousand dollars of damages will be handled there. All right. But like I said, if the infringement happened and you didn't have the copyright. Uh, registration first then you more than likely won't get any statutory damages but you will get some damages now let's go now how to prevent this thing ideas are fixed not registered and are unpublished this is how, how we prevent this right send your demos out in sets and use registered versions only controlling the amount of material you send out for recognition helps keep organization with your operation you can register 20 published works in in album form at a time now this is amazing for us right for 65 dollars since when since february 2021 you should have a monthly copyright budget and write it off as business expenses that's 780 dollars a year did i forget to mention that the registration process is now dumb as a matter of fact stupid easy at this point it used to be kind of confusing. Like every time, you know, you do it, you're like, wait, wait, did I do that? Get it to get it, that, you know, but now it's easy. It's really easy to do the registration now. OK, now, though, TikTok, like I said, and social media content are already protected under copyright law because the expression of the idea is already fixed. If something goes viral, tracing the origin will be a headache, though possible. Copyright your viral moments or social media content regularly. OK. So set aside some money, man. Set aside some money to get your if you're if you're creating social media content, set aside some money so that you can keep it copywritten. Now, here's our last point here. Uh, ideas are fixed, registered and published. What's the operator's plan? There was no plan. All right. They were newbies or blatant thieves who were going to use your success for attentional gain. Like that's just what it is. The people who are going to steal something that's that's copywritten know exactly what they're doing. And just was a quick idea and a quick plan to say, you know, because it wasn't no real thought out plan. It was just, hey, 
we're going to use this joint. We're either going to sample it and we're going to put it out for free. And if it catches on, it catches on. And if they sue us, whatever. But we're now known. That's what most people do when they take copywritten works and they use it, you know. So that's how that's going to go down. Now, what do you do? Well, let that line sit in the water, wait for the infringer's revenue to pick up uh, and then pursue them because you want a fat payday. All right. You want that fat payday, man. You know what I'm saying? Notify your entertainment attorney, a copyright litigation attorney, because the entertainment attorney, the person that does your contracts is not a litigator most of the time. Litigators are special people that, that love to salivate over copyright law and fight it. And your entertainment attorney is a transactional attorney. They love to make money on getting deals done. The copyright litigation attorney wants to get a lot of money from the deals that the entertainment attorney made on the other infringer's behalf. Now, uh, and look out for a great opportunity to pounce. That's what you're trying to do in this position. See, that's what you do when you protect your work. See, I, I want you all to understand, this is the Music Money Makeover Show. We're in business to do business as a music generating company. So, therefore, we must spend money like a company to protect our assets, which is the music. Okay? That's what it is. All right? Because people are out here to steal. They're going, people will steal. People will steal any and everything and take ideas, you know, so you got to protect your work. All right. So then now final verdict, copyright your music, set up a monthly copyright budget savings plan and set aside sixteen dollars and twenty five cents a week to fulfill it. Why do I say this? Because I think that the average writer can pump out like, you know, or beat maker can do like 20 beats a month. You copyright those 20 beats a month. And you 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 register them, sixty five bucks. You know what I mean? Like you you gonna this is this is like, this is this is two meals at Chipotle a week. Set aside two Chipotle bowls a week, right here, uh, to get to to handle your business. You can at least do that. You know what I mean? To protect your stuff, because when you start heavily moving in these streets, it becomes. It, it, it gets crazy. Final verdict. Copyright your music, set up a monthly copyright budget, savings plan, and set aside sixteen twenty five a week to fulfill it. I'm out of here. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching today's show. All right. Um, right. I'll probably get back on camera in some future episodes, but I, I'm loving this. You know, I'm loving the, the slides and the teaching method of the show because I feel that outside of just seeing me and my face talk about a lot of things, you actually get to see what it is I'm saying. Right? Visit musicmoneymakeover.com to download all my books and free guides. Don't forget you can text me 470 291 57. There it is. 57 67 470 291 57 67. Yes, there are a lot of you texting me. Okay? I get it. I know. I know. Sometimes certain texts slip through the cracks. It's a lot of people. A lot of people I maintain on the texting app. Anyway, but I will get to you. All right? You can also email me. If you go to musicmoneymakeover.com, use the contact form, email me. Yes, I respond back on everything. Now, if you want to look at some other videos on copyright, search through the channel. All right. There are other videos on copyright on this channel. And uh, I will see you all later. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, Click on the book a call tab to get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions answered and solved. Thanks for watching.